So everybody's talking about Fallout and how great the show is. So again, I've never played the games. I know of their existence, so I decided to check it out and hear my thoughts. As I said, I've never played the games. I know of their existence. I know they're very popular and they've been around for quite some time. But again, I don't know anything about them. I just know that I believe Fallout 77 or 76 was real buggy. And I remember a lot of people complaining about Bethesda a couple years back. That's all I know. So when I heard it was coming out on Amazon, I really wasn't too eager to check it out. Considering the track record with the Rings of Power, I heard a lot of bad negative things about that. And also with video game adaptations not being so great. I know Halo just recently came out and again, I've never played Halo. I was more of a PlayStation guy, but I heard a lot of true Halo fans did not like that Master Chief was taking off his helmet, etc. So again, video game adaptations have really have been hit or miss. So I wasn't too eager to check out Fallout. But again, with recent just conversations of people on Twitter and some YouTubers that I trust saying, hey, you got to check it out. The first episode is really good. I decided to sit down and watch it. And you know what? I loved it. In a future post-apocalyptic Los Angeles brought by nuclear decimation, citizens must live in underground bunkers to protect themselves from radiations, mutants, and bandits, and raiders. The show centers around three central characters. The first one is the primary protagonist, which is Lucy McLean, played by Elena Pernell. Then there's Maximus, who is a squire in the Knights of the Brotherhood of Steel, played by Aaron Molson. Hope I'm saying his name correctly. And then there's a ghoul, a.k.a. Cooper Howard, played by the great Walton Goggins. Guy's charismatic as hell. Now, what I love about the show is that it throws you into this world and you as a viewer who has no context or no reference on what's going on, you immediately have a lot of questions. And what the show really did for me that not many shows have done as of late is that it gave me curiosity. I was curious about what was going on. The show starts off with uh, Cooper Howard at a birthday party. And you hear on the televisions and on the radio that there's a tensions are increasing amongst world leaders and the threat of nuclear war is upon us. And I love how the show gives us some reference points as far as how dangerous a bomb can be. His daughter's asking the questions about how, how are we scared or what, what should we do if a bomb happens? And he gives us a great reference point with the thumbs up. He says that when he was in the Marines and if you saw a bomb, you put your thumb up against the bomb from a visual standpoint. And if the bomb is smaller than your thumb, you run for the hills. But if the bomb is bigger than your thumb, you more or less, there's no point in running. So as a viewer, it gives us great context about the severity and really the mentality of what happens when the bomb goes off. Then before you know what the bomb goes off and there he is racing off and with his daughter on a horse. And then the show cuts 200 and something years later happens. And now we're in this world. So again, as a viewer with no context of what's going on or what means what, who the bad guys I was curious. I'm like, holy shit, 200 years passed by. What happened to him? What happened to the horse? What happened to his daughter? So it grabbed me right away. You're then introduced to Lucy McLean, who is a vault vaulty or person who lives in a vault. I don't even know that's the word, but she lives in this vault with the community. And they've been down there for almost like 200 years. And their whole job was to maintain society, maintain a civilization with rules. And when they got the go ahead to start civilization all over again. Then you find out they're in Vault 33 and there's other vaults, Vault 31, 32, and then mystery starts to occur. And as a viewer, you're curious of what's going on in Vault 31. What's going on in Vault 32? Then you, as you watch the show, you find out there's like over 120 vaults out there. So you're immediately curious and thinking about all these endless possibilities on what stories, what occurred in these other vaults, all these other people, or, or are they okay what's going on so again it grabs your curiosity and your imagination and that's what i love about this show i have so many questions that i want to go to a, a youtube video and have every vault explained to me but i'm dying not to do it but again I'm, i want to know more about this world and i think you as a viewer who have never seen the show i think you will have that same feeling and the world's presented beautifully because lucy is then prompted to have to go rescue her father and go to the surface world. And again, she's lived her entire life in this vault. So now she has to go to the surface world. That's when she starts seeing how civilization has really gone about since they've sealed up the vault. Then you have Maximus, who is a character who's, again, a squire trying to be a knight. He's trying to prove himself and find out who he is. And then you have Cooper Howard, who was opened up the show as a human. But now you find out that he is a ghoul who is on the verge of going feral. Feral meaning they've lost their mind and they're just going to go become a, a full lone zombie. So again, you're curious and you have so many questions and I love how the show, each show, it can get sidetracked at times, but each show is just introducing you to these characters in this world and how things are now run. There's no currency in the world. Everyone's, everyone uses bottle caps for money. Roaches are now the size of dogs, which I can't stand roaches that terrified the hell out of me. 
And if I hadn't said this enough already, you want to know more. You want to learn more. And again, I was hooked on this show. I binge watched it over a couple of days. My fiance, who has no reference to the games or the storyline, was hooked on it. Uh, if you ask me, the one performer in this entire show that really stole the show and is very charismatic is Walton Goggins, that guy. I loved him in everything he does. He's got that that uh, that twang. He's got that charisma. And most every character he plays is more or less the same. I loved him in The Hateful Eights. But here he just owns a show, and I love how he, he's really playing two characters, a human and then the ghoul. And you you learn more about what the ghoul's motivation is as the show goes along. But I find him as the, very pleasant to be around, and I loved his character most of all. The show's got this 1950s nuclear age art deco style. Now, the show starts off in 2077. So why in 2077 is the world looking like the 50s? I don't know. That's a question I have again that I know I can Google and find the answer to, but I don't want to. I'm curious about that. And it's very it's presented in a realistic way. The show blends soundtracks and scores from the 1950s and 60s into the show. I found myself playing uh, act naturally on my workout mix. You know what I you know what I'm talking about. If you know what if you've seen the show. It's a cool song. The point I'm trying to say, everybody, is that the show really surprised me. And I love that I love it because, again, when it comes to video game adaptations, I we've seen plenty of movies come before this and fail or deliver a lackluster performance. Hey, that was OK. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. It was OK. But I think for video games, I think for moving forward, the proper medium for video games is television shows. When you have The Last of Us, I've heard some great things about Twisted Metal. I haven't seen that yet. But then you have the Fallout again. As a video gamer who plays games who never play Fallout, I love this show. And I, I think moving forward. Shows are the appropriate uh, platform for that, because, again, when you have 16, 20 hours of story to kind of condense into a two hour movie, most times it's not going to work and it's going to fail. I think going with a with a show with eight or 10 episodes is the appropriate uh, jumping point. And if you're listening to me, anybody who's in charge of Middle Gear Solid, we want a show. I don't want a damn movie. Give us an eight hour, 10, uh, 10 episodic series of Metal Gear. Do it right snake that being said i'm giving fallout a thumbs up hey get it <laughs> well those are my thoughts on the fallout television show everybody i hope you enjoyed this review and again if you are a diehard fan of the fallout games and the pc console games i want to know your thoughts i want to know what the diehard fans actually thought about this show put your comments down below i'm very curious to hear what you have to say and again if you like the video please subscribe like the video leave some comments i look forward to hearing from you as always thanks for watching gen x reviews take care and i'll see you around peace